G'day everyone, Chris Joey here again. Just had another comment from Blue Jandal. Blue Jandal out there, signed up to YouTube, asked me a couple of questions. Now, his next comment was, New Zealand Coke prior to use Japanese imports and will continue to do the same post-Japanese imports. Mate, it didn't survive post-Japanese imports. We had a lower quality card that was here in New Zealand 25 years ago that was a higher price and in worse condition than anything that's almost on our roads now. Mm. It's debatable, but they weren't good. Man, I remember my old man's car when I was, you know, five or six. Okay, 10 or 15. But anyway, it, it wasn't really a good car. It wasn't as safe as the cars that are on the road right now. So, you know, we haven't um, <clears throat> been <clears throat> coping prior to the Japanese imports. The Japanese imports came in, they broke up uh, open the market, they forced franchise dealers to lower their margins, there was a bigger supply of vehicles so overall they became cheaper and along the way the New Zealand government figured out some regulations that they, were gonna, that they put in place to protect you, the public. Those regulations are now the best in the world. Go and check it out online, look it up on YouTube, New Zealand Compliance. I hear some idiot out there has done a video on the whole thing. Anyway. Um, he also says, my concern is we buy another country's unwanted used cars and trick ourselves that we will be safer and better off. I read that Pakistan and Russia do the same. That right there is a good reason to stop. The government has been weaning New Zealand imports for the last couple of years and will continue to, good, and will continue to do so. Good luck, is what he said. Um, now, no, we are not better off and we, we are not better off and now we have good restrictions for vehicles entering New Zealand. Right? Pakistan and Russia are relatively new markets in the, in the uh, uh, import of second-hand vehicles and quite frankly they're a little bit corrupt, well they're, they're corrupt. So there's no real protection in place for the citizens of that country that are buying those products. Whereas in New Zealand, make no mistake, we are the best in the world at it. We've gone through 20 something years worth of learning curves, restrictions, regulations and the government's come up with a bunch of really good ones. Like I say, go and check it out on YouTube. Uh, New Zealand compliance. It's, it's informative, you know. You'd be surprised what a car's got to go through to enter the country. Anyway, um, thank goodness New Zealand is not like they are. And just because other countries do something is not a good reason to say we should stop doing it. You know, Russia and Pakistan do this, so we shouldn't do it. Ah, not true at all, right? We take the best of the best that we can out of Japan. The best of the best that is available to us, you know, and it's got to meet all of these restrictions, which mean non damaged, non rusty cars through licensed motor vehicle dealers who will stand behind their product even though it's a second hand vehicle and subject to any kind of engine conditions you know it's within reason um, anyway thanks very much for your comments don't look to keep, uh, don't forget to look at other people's comments and in this breaking news from due from other people's comments out there online I've realized that I am not the be all and end all knowledgeable person on climate change and air quality and pollution so I've um, jumped on line and, and looked up a uh, professor at the Adelaide University. His name is uh, Ian Pimler. He is a professor of mining geology in the Mawson building of the University of Adelaide. Um, he's also a professor of earth sciences at the University of Melbourne. And this guy's a little bit controversial because he's going against the grain and saying that there is no global warming, right? That's not my opinion. Okay, let's get that straight. I didn't say this. I'm just saying well, who this guy is. Now he's, I've, contact, I've contacted him and he's agreed to come and do a video interview for us. His schedule is completely full up until about the 24th of July, but stay tuned, we're going to have an interview with him here online. Now there's a video link just here, click on this to go to an interview that he has done with someone else. Feel free to start uh, preparing any questions that you'd like to ask this gentleman. Uh, send it to my email, which is golcjp at gmail.com. That's golc at gmail, uh, golcjp at gmail.com. And uh, let me know what kind of questions you'd like me to ask Ian. Now, like I said, he is a little bit controversial. What he says is there is no global warming. Right? It's a myth that's been created by government because they've got to justify their job, sort of. Not exactly his quote. But... Um, he says that uh, if you study the earth and the atmosphere and the temperature changes along with solar and all of the other things that you've got to put into this equation, you will see that over the last hundreds of millions of years that the earth has followed a similar pattern and it's going down that same pattern now. It's not warming, it's actually losing temperature, it's cooling. Um, and uh, that's why they've stopped call it, calling it global warming. Now it's called um, climate change or something. Anyway. 
controversial, yes, want to put your comments out there, welcome them, is it my opinion, no, but I say that there's more to this and we should find out. Right, um, so, hope to see you soon, look forward to your emails, stay tuned, it's going to be interesting, got some good people coming along, give us some real interviews. If anyone out there would like to give us the other side of the story that's in opposition to Ian's um, standpoint, feel free, send me an email, I'll come out and do a video interview for you and post it up online for everyone else to see. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned. Gandalf.